Welcome to Bible Insights with Wayne Conrad. Psalm 119 says, The entrance of your words give light, and it imparts understanding to the simple. Today's topic is the backstory of the birth of Jesus of Nazareth. Now, the word backstory may not be the exact word that we mean. So, what do I mean by that? Well, a backstory is, is a backstory of events that occurred or preceded what is now happening in, in real life. It's the background of the events and the people that contribute or help shape what is currently transpiring. And so I'm using the word sort of in this particular sense. And I'm using it in today's podcast to talk about the prior reality of Jesus before he was born of Mary. You see, Jesus existed before he was born. He existed as the Word from all eternity. There has never been a time when the Word did not exist alongside the Father and the Spirit. So Jesus has an existence in eternity before he became a human through the womb of the Virgin Mary. There are scriptures that pull back the curtain, as it were, and allow us to see the one born of Mary before he was born of Mary, before he was conceived in her womb by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of her in Bethlehem of Judea. I want to share those scriptures with you today. First, consider the creation account recorded in Genesis chapter 1 and the first three verses. It says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Now think about these verses. The first verse stands all alone, really. In the beginning, God. Whenever the beginning began, God already was, because God has no beginning. He has always been. But this God who has always been is the creator of the heavens and the earth. Now, in the creation, there is this planet that we now call Earth. And at the time that Genesis 1 starts recording the activity of God, it was without form and void. It was empty. And darkness was over the face of the deep. It was water everywhere. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. But notice there's God and His Word and the Spirit. Now I want you to compare that with John chapter 1. Again, the first few verses. Because you see, John, the apostle, is pulling a direct parallel with Genesis 1 when he talks about the Word. We read, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. So whenever the beginning began, God was, and whenever the beginning began, God and His Son, or the Word, were there. And all things were made by him, that's through the word, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Verse 14, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Glory is of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. In verse 18, No one has ever seen God, the only God, who is at the Father's side. He has made Him known. This is the English Standard Version. So God, the Word, they were in fellowship from all eternity. This is why He is referred to as the Eternal Word the eternal Son. So when we read the word begotten or hear it in the creed, it does not mean 
the beginning like it is in human procreation. It simply means that there is this eternal relationship that has always existed within the one God, and that relationship embraces God, the Logos, or the Word, who is the uncreated one, who is the one who did create all things. This one became flesh, and he did so through the womb of the Virgin Mary. Let me read from the Amplified Bible, from John 1, 14. And when the Word, that is Christ, became flesh, that is, became human or incarnate, and tabernacled, literally fixed his tent of flesh and lived a while among us. And we actually saw his glory. John's talking. He's saying that he, we've seen his glory, his majesty. He did. He saw the glory and the majesty on the Mount of Transfiguration. And he also saw the Lord, the glory of his resurrection, and watched him as he ascended into heaven. He lived with him for three years. So actually, he saw his glory. Such glory is an only begotten son. That is, the, the heir, the, 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 the one who is the very first. It's an only begotten son receives from his father, full of grace. Grace means favor, loving kindness, and truth. That's the Amplified Bible. But Paul also gives us a glimpse into the backstory. Paul, in his letter to the Philippi church, in chapter 2, writes this, Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he, that is Jesus, Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped or he held on to, but he emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. Think this is in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, the Lexham English Bible reads, who existing in the form of God, did not consider being equal with God something to be held on to, to be grasped, but he emptied himself by taking the form of a slave, by becoming in the likeness of people, and being found in appearance like a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, that is, death on a cross. Now, the word that's translated form, form of God, and form of a slave in this translation, or in the form of God, is the word morphe in Greek. It means a form or a shape. It is the way something is. Jesus was eternally in the form of God. That is, he always was deity, and he always remained deity. He was eternally in the form of God. He always existed by the Father's side. There was never a time when the Father and the Son were not with each other. And he is the Word who was present at the beginning and was in face-to-face fellowship with the Father and who shared deity with the Father. This one was born of Mary. When this happened, he took to himself the form, the formation, the shape of humanity. That is, he became an actual human being while not ceasing to be what he eternally is, God. And so he did not lose his deity, though he did cover up his glory, but he added to himself humanity. And so we have Jesus, who is God and man at the same time. Now, why did he do this? Well, Hebrews 10 quotes from Psalm 40 as being on the lips of Jesus as he was incarnate through Mary. This is what it reads. Psalm 40 is being on the lips of Jesus reads, Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not want, but a body you prepared for me. You did not delight in whole burnt offerings and offerings for sin. Then I said, Behold, I have come. In the roll of the book, it is written about me to do your will, O God. A body was prepared for him. 
to offer the true effective offering for sin once for all in his body on the tree, on the cross of Calvary. So that's why. That's the why of the incarnation. This is why the Logos became a man. And the Lord Jesus Christ is this eternal Son, this Word, Word who became flesh. For a while, he tabernacled among us, but in his glorious resurrection ascension, he took that immortal body of the resurrection back into heaven. So today, on the very throne of God, at the right hand of the Father, sits the incarnate Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. Now, there are a lot of songs sung at Christmas time, and some of them have some very deep theology. Sometimes we really don't think about it, but I want to share with you one or two that have in it this biblical truth about who Jesus Christ is and what happened when he was born of Mary. So there are two classic Christian hymns that I want to share that express both the prior reality of the eternal Son, the Word, and the historical event of the birth of the Messiah, Jesus. The first one, just two stanzas from Thomas Petzl. He wrote, Behold, the great creator makes himself a house of clay, a robe of human form he takes forever from this day. Hear this, the wise eternal word, as Mary's infant cries, a servant is our mighty Lord and God in cradle lies. Or this great classic hymn, it's been sort of reformed with more modern words. Their earlier words were of the Father's love begotten, ere the worlds began to be. He is Alpha and Omega, he the source, the ending he, of the things that are, that have been, and that future years shall see evermore and evermore or a newer translation, of the Father's heart begotten when no world had come to be. Stanza two. By his word was all created. He commanded it was done. Earth and sky and boundless ocean in their threefold order one. All that sees the moon's soft radiance, all that breathes beneath the sun, evermore and evermore. And then, Going back to the older translation, of that birth forever blessed, when a virgin full of grace, by the Holy Ghost conceiving, bore the Savior of our race. And the babe, the world's redeemer, first revealed his sacred face, evermore and evermore. Stanza four. This is he whom priest and poet sang of old with one accord whom the voices of the prophets promised in their faithful word. Now he shines, the long expected. Let creation praise its Lord evermore and evermore. Praise him, all you hosts of heaven. Praise him, angels in the height. Powers, dominions, bow before him and extol his glorious might. Let no tongue on earth be silent. Let each heart and voice unite evermore and evermore. Christ, to thee with God the Father, and O Holy Ghost, to thee, him enchanted, high thanksgiving, and unwearied praises be, honor, glory, and dominion, and eternal victory, evermore and evermore. That's a mixture of the older and the newer and a couple of stanzas that one has that the other lacks. But I want you to think about these words. Before there was a creation of any kind, the Son was with the Father, the Word. And he who delighted in the Father, and the Father delighted in him. For God, you see, is love, eternal love. He has that capacity before he ever made creation because he is a triune being. And of the Father's love, ere the worlds 
Before the worlds ever came to be, He is the beginning and the end. He's the source of Him. All things that have been have come, and He shall be there in all the future that's to come. This one great and glorious word became a human being, a little babe through the womb of Mary. But he grew up, and in that body that had been prepared for him by God, he offered himself for the sins of his people, that all who call upon his name, who believe in him, have their sins forgiven and have the righteousness that he himself earned credited to their account so that they can be forever sons and daughters of the Almighty God. Oh, that's the meaning behind the incarnation of Jesus. This is not a fairy tale. This is history. And this is is the revelation of God. Believe in him, whom to know is eternal life. This has been Wayne Conrad with Bible Insights.